All right. Another episode. Hey, Max. Podcast. Hey, it's, it's been like, a minute. It's been a, been a little while. Yeah. Glad you're feeling better. Yeah. I was a little under the weather. We had to uh, shoot some photos for a campaign. We had real work to do um, <laughs> outside sure. of talking shit for an hour. Um, so we're back now. Um, we've had a fun little two weeks, and it's the Players' Championship this week. Um, there's some stuff going on. There's a lot. There's a lot of shit going on. Yeah. We'll kind of give you a quick rundown of what we plan to talk about today. Um, there. This is in no particular order whatsoever. Whatsoever. Jay Monahan's at the bottom, though. Let's Jay be clear Monahan. that John Man- Jay Monahan is at the clear bottom he of anything we talk about. Is treading water, and we're we're not calling a lifeguard. Um, <laughs> Anthony Kim shot sixty five. Scotty Scheffler wins Ar- Arnie's tournament. Yeah. At Bay Hill, uh, we got the players. Like I said, full swing. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot. Comments on Jay Monahan, and I don't know why I just put the Masters below Jay Monahan, but we'll talk about um, some f- exciting potential news and imminent news yeah. for uh, for the Playmore Pod and um, Augusta National. So I don't know. Let's just start. Let's start off with uh, full swing. What do you think about that? I mean, I. I think it was great. I watched two episodes the first night, got to bed at a reasonable time, and then I like went all in. I, to me, I mean, I thought it was great. I was hoping that there was a little bit more information, or just like, th- th- I think they teased everything in the trailers, right? I thought Rory might say more. I thought Jay might express a little bit more. He didn't. I thought that that was garbage. Jay's garbage. I loved the Fitzpatrick episode, like Alex thriving at the open and just seeing like the Fitzpatrick's father just like having probably the time of his life you have two of your kids out at the open and the one who's 400 or 700 something in the world is beating Matt Fitzpatrick yeah U.S. Open champ U.S. Open champ you must just feel so good about your life like I would be the the most proud father I could ever imagine my two kids competing at the open the worst one beating the better one yeah the thing that i thought was really funny out outside of how awesome it was is how the parents kind of spoke about um oh my god alex alex right yeah we're 100 alex okay um <laughs> How they spoke about Alex, they're like, that's just our little shithead. Yeah. Like, like that's our grunt. He's going to work our, through it. Yeah. yeah he's like going he's, through some stuff. Matt is perfect. Yeah. He is a perfect. He is so, he's so dialed in with everything. And then, but I did like Alex and his girlfriend, like she had a cool backstory. She, dude, she plays for Wake Forest. She's like top five in the entire world Stick. right now. She is so good. Yeah. She played LACC or Rivers. Like there was a U.S. Uh, women's college tournament. Um, in LA, it might have been LACC. It, it was LACC, it was. and they like she crushed it there. It yeah, was, it was match play. So that there's like some yeah, really really cool stories behind it. I think having a brother who is literally writing every single thing down, every single thing, yeah, like word for word, thought for thought, and you're gonna go out and beat him. Yeah, sick. It has That's to be so the greatest sick. feeling in the entire. Like I cannot work him. There's no way that you're gonna work outwork matt fitzpatrick nobody does no and And then then, just to qualify in an open qualifier and then end up beating him he was playing lights out it was just such a beautiful thing to see they even mention it in other episodes like other episodes are in within that out that episode they're like uh yeah i couldn't other tour players were like i could never do what he does yeah like there's no chance and then alex strolls in and qualifies like anybody else and then gets after i thought it was cool too that they mentioned um, his performance in the Zurich, so they built this whole like arc, yeah. this whole story. Hey, you're not doing well right now. Yeah, and and the pressure of just being like gratefully invited to it, and you maybe don't deserve it. You're just the brother of Matt is the only reason you're here. And then hey, I'm not the brother of Matt. I'm just Alex Fitzpatrick, and then I'm gonna come out and crush it. Was like so exciting for me. And to that point, I remember watching um, like the leaderboard that week. I didn't really watch too much of the golf and they were kind of up there a little bit and that i thought i was like oh that's a really cool story like him and his brother they're playing didn't realize that it was just all matt by himself playing Mm. it so seeing that in full swing was was wild the uh the transfer for me when i saw they did like a shot for matt and then they're like well and we're gonna jump over to seven and see alex 
who happens to be three strokes ahead of Matt. I was like, hell yeah. Like yeah. that is so cool. Yeah. That must just make him feel like everything that he's worked towards is so deserving. Cause I think he's lived in his brother's shadow for such a long time and deserves to have his own. I mean, even at 400 in the world, that's really fucking he's an good. Unbelievable <laughs> that's really, golfer. I think they're, they're like beating that down that that's not a very good thing. But imagine being even the 400th best golfer in the entire world. Dude, you saw me play at grass clippings the other day. <laughs> yeah. I fucking topped like, the first yeah, shot. Three or four zeros. <laughs> it's <fucking> insane. <laughs> All of the zeros. Yeah. Are you kidding me? The other episode. That's that, another conversation. That's, that's a conversation for later. What the fuck happened? <laughs> Anyways, the. Um, Ricky episode for it pulled on all of my heartstrings. It did, yeah. Um, we have Lisa sitting over there, our marketing director for Devro. Hey, Lisa. Um, hi, Lisa. She's plugged in. It's by the way, it's five fifty um, on a Thursday, and Lisa's still working. So we love. Shout you. out to Lisa. Shout out to Lisa. Um, she loved the Wyndham Clark episode. I was talking a lot about. I was hyping it up before she watched the Ricky episode, and we felt the same way. Like. Something about seeing Ricky go through the grind in real time and then watching it come together in this yeah. episode. And I was at LACC, saw the crowd fully supporting him. So cool to be able to like capture that moment and do it properly. And I felt like they executed that episode so perfectly. Well. Right. Perfectly. Yeah. And you really were pulling for him. It just yeah, wasn't the best luck on the final days and then he went and won a couple weeks later right so that was not the it's not a major right but <laughs> but it's still okay. rocket and he's back and he yeah. still gets like more exemptions and he's he's yeah. gonna be playing well yeah he was sure. teetering for a while there and now he's like in a legitimate position again. yeah and imagine being buddies with like justin thomas jordan spieth and you're sort of the one lagging by quite a bit you either have two options it's you're it's going to consume you and you're going to get like really down about it or you can just suck it up and just start like playing better and i feel like the answer that we always talk about every week is just like play better yeah. and he showed up so hard he worked on his swing he did like so many things he has like back this, to butch yeah exactly the yeah. butch Harmon thing was so cool Super he's not even cool. going to tournaments but he's like you want to come to vegas we'll work on it yeah. you know and he has like, like a really tight swing it seems like very it's not John Rahm ish, but it's very like sharp and tight. Yeah. He has sort of like a, a dark fowler situation yeah. going on yeah, with the sunglasses. He does. Yeah. So they showed some of the older clips, right? Where he's wearing his orange and everything. Yeah, and long now, hair. Now yeah. Like, like definitely like been hitting the dispensary way too often. Yeah. And now he's like, yeah, an F1 racer. He's just like, yeah. just like trying streamlined. to streamline. Yeah. It's very streamlined with yeah. his decisions. Yeah. I also love the, en the entry and. This is probably a tip for anybody with a significant other. If you ever introduce your um, significant other, look at what Ricky Fowler did for that interview. He's like, yeah, my wife, she's better looking than me, smarter yeah. than me, more athletic than way me. Way more athletic. Yeah, yeah, way more like notoriety in the sports space. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was funny. It made me laugh. Yeah. Um, what did we think of the Joel episode? I thought it was great. I thought it it opened up a lot. It, it's weird that Joel played this hero last year on Full Swing, and then it showed us being in Arizona. It really, like, showing like, Scott's still Arizona a thousand times. It showed his struggles intensely, and it compared him to Wyndham, who I think struggled for a long time emotionally, mentally, um, and how to balance that. Wyndham took a really hard turn to try to like seek some help. Or actually, I don't even think he's sought help. Someone told him he needs to fucking seek some help. Yeah. And Is I think caddy? Joel's caddy also said that too. Gino was like, you need to get some help as well. Um, yeah, they definitely made it seem like Joel didn't give a shit, which I think he does give a shit a lot. Um, but yeah, everyone battles every year. I mean, he had very instant fame, played well, did some stuff at waste management that everybody loved. He's like the every boy, everyone's, you know, um, pro. Like we all right. love him. But it was just, I feel like they really brought him down a little bit. But I think he, you know, he's there. He's got the opportunity to play and, and succeed well. Yeah, he's, he's going to be fine. And I had mentioned it before we started the pod, but watching Barstool's video, he was like, it's a year later. Yeah. And he goes, that was a year ago, guys. I was having a kid. Right. I was dealing with some the shit. The kid thing is super hard. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I can only imagine at this point. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm. You'll get there. I'll check back with you yeah. in a few <laughs> years. But yeah, Joel's gonna be fine. Um, 
What did you think of? We didn't talk about this prior. What did you think of Zach Johnson? Yeah. Like what the fuck? It's tough. It's really tough. Um, I think Luke Donald did a great job. Yeah, and we've we've talked about that before. Yeah. You know, I think that he didn't handle it well. He was in probably a very tough situation, and him and JT are best friends. JT has done well at the Ryder Cup. So there is some thought there. And I've honestly have not been a Keegan Bradley fan, but I felt for Keegan so hard. That was oh like maybe God. one of the more emotional moments of full swing was that Keegan the whole time was like, I'm winning this tournament in my hometown. And I feel like I've got, this is going to like solidify me to play um, in the Ryder cup. And it just didn't happen. And that was brutal. It was really brutal. <laughs> like I think he should get an invite. JT did play well. I don't think that Keegan playing in the Ryder Cup would have made it us win at all. No, for no. sure not. Um, but I think that the U.S. gets a lot of flack historically because Europe is sort of a boys' club, and they choose friends or like people that get along together. So that's what we tried to do. Yeah. That's probably what Zach tried to do in that situation. That's fair. Um, but we just sucked. And I think we thought we were just going to walk into Rome and crush it. I know. And w it was brutal. Like I was up for every single minute of that. Yeah. And I was defeated at like five or six in the morning. Every I remember time walking I into out. the office and just being like, well, it's already fucking over boys. Yeah. And everybody else knew that I was Hoblin waking up. chipping in on that one. That was it. It was Rom, already over. Yeah. Rom, like, playing lights out. The first three or four holes of that tournament, I was like, okay. Yeah. This is not wrap. us. That's a wrap for the U.S. boys. But Cantlay and Homa showed up so hard. And Cantlay dealing with what he had to deal with, not even knowing that, like, the hats off thing. Yeah. And the bank account thing, which is absolutely hysterical. It's genius by whatever journalist put out that, like, Cantlay's not wearing a hat. Hats because, off yeah, to your to bank, bank account. account. Genius stuff. Like, that is so, like, they're so far ahead of us when it comes to, like, banter and, like, football, like, shenanigans and yeah. bullshit. Uh, we have a lot of lessons to learn there. For sure. For sure. But Cantlay showed up under some of the biggest pressure homa yeah. showed up under some of the biggest pressure ever so i think that those i think that is a big part i mean i think having of, of course you're gonna have Harmon there you won the open but like putting Harmon against ludwig ober is just like a defeating situation like like we're supposed to be america yeah where we're like bigger stronger yeah and then you have ludwig who's kind of like this golden child yeah putting his yeah. arm on top of yeah Brian Harmon, who's hitting a four hybrid iron into something but yeah it was tough it was a really tough situation uh, i mean i i can't wait to go to the next one yeah i feel like oh i have to go to god. every Ryder cup beth page oh my gosh that's gonna be it's pretty gonna be, bad it's gonna be <laughs> it's like gonna waste be management level of of uh response yeah. where they're like we're so sorry with we the promise. new york accent is yeah. gonna be rough yeah that's it's a lot worse than the the people who fly in the scottsdale yeah because i think they can last for like 20 days without any sleep and they're just gonna go for it yeah i'm i'm very much looking forward <laughs> yeah, to that yeah. <laughs> i'm trying to think of any other like little tidbits throughout it um we talked about i mean the trailer showcased that Rory was like going to really, they were going to really dive into what he thought about. And they kind of went through Skipped more like over a little bit. Yeah. How much of an issue he had at the majors. I mean, rewatching that reminded me that he actually played really well in the majors. He right. just didn't win any of them, but they didn't talk about the live PJ tour stuff nearly as much as I thought they were going to. For sure. Yeah. And I, I think too, they probably are committed to so many cameras per person and per player. Like a lot of people are complaining that Michael Block, you know, the Block Party, he wasn't a part of that at all. But they probably only have so much access and they want to make sure they kept some of the biggest stuff. Um, but it was interesting. Like I love the DJ thing where DJ is just like outside of everything, none of this affects him at all. He's Dude, just like he loves his life. The most go with the flow guy. I am so envious. Like if I could choose any player, PJ or Liv that's like going through stuff right now i would probably pick dj yeah the guy's so happy he's got a boat that's not too big he can no. drive it himself he's just so <laughs> so what stoked. what was the the name of his boat is like it, it's something like i think it's just like relax beach hill or, yeah it's like be yeah it might be beach hill yeah. i think that it's actually probably spelled wrong yeah <laughs> <laughs> so like b-e-e -E. yeah 
Uh, fucking A. Yeah, <laughs> DJ wins uh, most chill award for sure. Yeah. Then we get... You got to respect that. Yeah. You know, like there's... I think, too, there's so much turmoil and there's so much drama going on. So much politics. And you and I, like, I'm over professional golf. Like, yeah. it's really tough right now. And so DJ's just sort of separating himself from it, catching a bag. And yeah. I even, like, Max in his interview during Players' Championship is like, we're all complaining about way too much right now. Right. And it, and it is... I think it's good for golf as someone who's playing golf. Golf as a activity and a hobby and a sport is getting better. Professional golf as a viewership and the sponsors, honestly, I think they could get a little crushed and I hope they do a little bit because yeah, they need their it. needs. They need it. There needs to be a reset with professional golf right now because it sucks. Yeah. Like I would love to see DJ and Brooks and Cam Smith in this tournament right now. It's for the fifth sure. major. Right, it's supposed to hosted be. by the PGA. This should be a conversation that I hope next year. I think Horschel talked on it. This should be a conversation that I think happens because it, this is an olive branch to give out to be like, okay, you know what? We want the best players. Right. Well, and to that point, like it's supposed to be your fifth major. You have so much of the PGA Tour audience that is split. Um, Sawgrass will produce like a great product regardless really who's, who's playing mm -hmm. um but i would be so interested so just for reference today's thursday so they played the first round they did. scotty's lead scotty played decent um wyndham's in the lead um help me out oh my god I just <laughs> slipped my mind who else is in the lead oh rory sorry um rory's in the lead like that leaderboard mixed in with a brooks kepka a dj yeah. cam smith you know would be like four or five under sure they're just missing those like such important pieces to the game that mm -hmm. like I am so excited for Augusta because like regardless I'd be excited for Augusta but I'm so excited for Augusta because those players are going to be yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. Like it's it adds to the allure of what major championships are. And And this is the fifth this should be the fifth one, right? Yeah, and that's that's I think that's you summed it up perfectly there. Like this is supposed to be that they need to figure the fuck out because um, Xander mentioned, he's like, I just don't think Jay is the guy he's whatsoever, yeah. which I love hearing that from him. Yeah. I actually thought that Xander and Scotty put on really good interviews because there are some digs that deserve to be had. And then you see Jay who's like, somehow the chair is like smaller and his suit is like yeah. larger. Why are his sad. suits? Why do his <laughs> like, suits? He know. looks like, like he, I'm putting on my dad's suit. Trust me. Everything's going to be <laughs> fine. Yeah. And I'm just like over Jay Monahan <laughs> being this, like I, I thought there was going to be like fire Jay chance. The guy's got to be gone. I mean, I think too, with all this new money coming in, they need to reappoint someone. I have no idea. Who we talked it through. We don't know. Who the, we don't know who that would be. Yeah. No one really wants to take that job. It's kind of like it trying to be sucks. the. It's, try, it's like trying to be the president of the U.S. right now. Yeah. You're kind of like fuck. also sucks. Yeah, sucks. Yeah. But the uh, yeah, I think hopefully that, they're not that old. But yeah, yeah, yeah. True. The fuck it. Yeah, I think that they need to listen. Actually, listen to the players who um, are on your tour. And the 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 one with with Scotty that was interesting to me is I hadn't really thought of it from the perspective of of scotty where he goes well if the fans have an issue with with the um divide currently like take it up with the players on live that left yeah that's fair but 350 million dollars for your family is also fair yeah so like yeah they are definitely to blame for a good portion it of was that. like yeah i the, the conversation of the splintering like what how do you feel about the splintering of the tour so obviously he's bummed about the splintering of the tour. He's bummed. He, he could have taken a bag too, but the splintering happened and not because of the players that took the money, but because of a new tour that started. So of course that was what separated because beforehand everyone was together. Um, that tournament just didn't offer enough. And now we're seeing that live did actually help out the players on PGA too. Like yeah. there's pit money and, and uh, bigger purses and things like that. So, it is a really tough conversation for, I mean, all parties involved. I honestly don't even know where I would stand right now because watching live tournaments, and I've tried, it looks fucking boring, but those guys are rich as fuck. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, well, okay. so, what am I going to do? <laughs> it's boring, but being under the weather the last few days, I had 
outside of like getting my shit done for work, I yeah, dove yeah, into yeah. like a lot of the content of just golf in general. Yeah. Again, because I just had nothing else to do. Um, the they did a recap video from the vid- from the tournament in Hong Kong. That recap video was fucking fire. Was it? It was really good. So they start from the first shot, shotgun, whatever start. And Abe Answer had like a five stroke lead, blew it, and then he ended up winning in a playoff against Cam Smith and Paul Casey. Wow. Pretty, it, I mean, that sound, if that was a PGA Tour event, you'd be like, wow, wow, yeah. that's like really intriguing. But the way that they show, showcase the coverage in this 15 minute recap or whatever it was. Yeah, you're getting 15 minutes out of right. three days. Right. right. I get it. I Those are all great players that I've truly love to watch for yeah. sure um but in the moment it's just like hard for me like y- certain players on certain holes i don't know what this course in jetta looks like right so i can't tell you what 18 is compared to someone who's coming in on seven or eight yeah so that's really tough for me um i i know that weather and a.m p.m starts late early early lights are a big issue with the pga but it i think it has to be like that because we need to know what those last three or four holes look like. Yeah, that's fair. I think that's fair. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, yeah, I just said it. yeah. Um, the so to the point of like course setup and stuff. Um, Sawgrass, we're back, which has like the best three finishing holes ever. I forget about how epic that place is, and I don't even like. So you're a lefty who it's a cut and every single I think about eighteen all every the time. Single yeah. time. But every single um like video talks about it as a righty and it's always like left to right. It, somebody's gonna play a cut, who plays a draw. As a lefty is we just reverse everything all the time. It's totally fine. It doesn't bother me at all. I don't think about it a lot. No, I don't think about it every yeah. single time. I'm like <laughs> yeah. watching a swing video. But I'm like, so oh, it's my left You're hand. a lefty who it's a cut. I'm a lefty who it's a draw. On 18, you can like play through into the fairway. And you would hope. Play. Yeah, you would hope. Sure. Yeah. But I'm like, okay, I'm going to be in those trees for sure. Because yeah. my draw cannot yeah. hold on that fairway at all, which makes it like a very, very difficult. Because what's the, what's not the cover, but the... I think it's like so 280 to the trees on the right, 270 to the trees on the right. So a lot of people are hitting three wood yeah. to stay away from it. But then someone who can keep it on the left side will hit driver just to hit the cover. Did you see any of the uh, coverage from like Rory's two drops today? I did. It seems exhausting. Yeah. Jordan Speed seems like he wasn't even like there and then just showed up to have a conversation. And Hovland is just pissed off Dude, all the time. Thank like, I'm so happy you said that. Yeah. Continue. Because anyway. they actually all just ended up agreeing with Rory. I think the issue was that Rory's drop previously yeah. on eighteen was bad. So they were like spiting him mm-hmm. on this future one. It turned out that this was probably the right drop because nobody else could say anything else. Yeah. So it was. I watched all eight minutes of it, and I was like, "This is dumb." You yeah. guys are saying too many words for nothing because you all you're just gonna agree with them anyways. And then what are we talking about? Like on that line, we're talking maybe ten yards back. Sure. Anyways. Sure. The first one was really funny because I was watching it like PJ Tour Live or whatever. Watching because Roy was going. He was like six deep at that point. Yeah. Who knows Flying. what that round was gonna be- become. So and that probably slowed his momentum. A hundred, yeah, for sure. And he ended up making it a phenomenal bogey and like great round. But I loved cheers, cheers, cheers. pause, cheers. Um, I loved the fact that like <laughs> he goes to drop on eighteen. Victor walks up and like Victor's got this mentality where he's just like, "Fuck the players." Like, yeah. Fuck. Rory like I'm I'm not giving you anything so essentially at the end of the day he was like no I do not agree with that drop yeah and then Jordan walks in like you said just like what's going on yeah whatever you think and so Rory goes okay I run this tour essentially yeah I whatever I think okay I'm dropping it right here here's my bogey yeah next one I didn't even really see what Victor said to the mo- for the most part because he was kind of holding the same stance. But then Jordan was like, <laughs> "Yeah, I mean," and then I just wanted Rory's. I just want to do whatever's right. And they're like, "This is wrong." Yeah. They're like, "I just want to do what's right. I'm gonna drop right here." Okay. Right. All right. And then something came up about the turtles. Like it came on. Like Hovland said, the the line was like closer to these turtles. 
I don't know. <laughs> it just doesn't make How any sense. How fucking stoned is Victor Hovland all the time? Hopefully, all the time. Yeah. That would only add up to all of this that's happening. But yeah, I don't know. So uh, Scotty Shuffler found his putter at Bay Hill. He's probably going to win again this week if Rory doesn't. Yeah, probably. I mean, he went what fifteen for fifteen or sixteen for sixteen last week inside. I think it was eighteen, fi- fi- fourteen. Feet, yeah, with like inside that. fifteen feet, which is outrageous. That's nuts. if he can find it. I actually was going to just wear a beard and bring a mallet putter. Yes. Because if that's what it takes. And he's got some sick new shoes. He does. <laughs> well, those shoes are definitely sick. They're so <laughs> bad. They're pretty bad. I made a video on it today. Yeah. Dude, if your sell point for a product is these were my colors in high school yeah. and my wife is a Taurus. Yeah. Probably not good. That's also not. Great. So what are your favorite um, golf shoes? Top three golf shoes. Top three golf shoes. Okay. Um, I really liked when the Air Jordan 1, like, white lows came out. Sure. Like, I like those shoes. They're just kind of hard to play in because after a couple of rounds, they bend in half, and you have, like, no ground force whatsoever. Okay. And you're a big guy. Yeah, I'll put those there Yeah. Uh, in, in the top three. No particular order, really. <clears throat> I like Footjoy Traditionals yeah. quite a bit. Uh the John ones are like Buscemi or yeah, all of them are perfect, really, in my eyes. Um, I would probably stick those two, like realistically. Right up there. Yeah, those are my favorite. How about you? Uh, I mean, I yeah, I would take. I have the first, not the first, the first John Buscemi for Joy ones were the buttercreams that uh-huh. have like a bigger sole. I didn't get those. I have the old Players Championship ones. Love those. The new ones that came out in the Wilcox, I'd probably probably get those. Um, you know, I'd take an old like hard spike, like a good yeah. old all white hard spike. I just love the sound. It's classic. I'm not even like a Nike guy, but the, I think the Travis Scott ones were pretty sick. They they they're, are cool. they're really nice. They are cool. If they weren't like a trillion dollars, I would definitely yeah dig it a lot more. Metalwood's been doing some good stuff. I like the snake skins, uh, but truly like the buttercream John Buscemi's. And then the new Wilcox that he just came out with would be top for me. I, I like real golf shoes. I do too. Like something about, you can wear, like this is from a, on a styling perspective, you can wear your more like, I it, it doesn't have, you don't have to match classic with classic. Like right. our Devro stuff. I think it's really cool when you wear kind of like a streetwear vibe with some like really high quality foot joy traditionals or like, John Buscemi stuff yeah. like that. Styling wise, I think that that looks better than wearing your more like I don't dig Air Maxes. Yeah, to golf with, they're a little too tall they for are. me. Like I feel like I already struggle to get down, I'm le- and I'm leaning forward too much. Yeah, right. Yeah, so I can't play in those at all. Yeah, per- but give me a fucking like I think like Max <laughs> Max Max Homa actually has like a. As far as a tour pro goes, he has a decent style. He does. There. He does a like, great he job. He looks like a good. He looks like a golfer, like your stereotypical golfer, but like a better. Like a, it's on the right path. Yeah, he's doing a great job. Will Zalatoris, I think, is there. Poor guy's skinnier than me. That's tough. Is he skinnier than you? Dude, he is. <laughs> yeah, he's very skinny. Fucking. But okay, but he has good foot joy classics. I'm I'm somewhere between stylistically um, a Keith Mitchell and a yeah. Minwoo Lee. Like if I could. Combine the futuristic look of Min Woo Lee, maybe pre Lululemon, and Keith Mitchell in the class, like a good seersucker pant with a pleat and a cuff, some classic foot choice. I'm all for it for sure. I'm getting all horned up over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just think that there's like a good balance there to be had for sure. Um, like I would wear, con- I think casual shoes in golf is great. If I'm playing a part three with my buddies, I'll wear a high top Converse, but I'm not going to swing out of my shoes on a driver sure. because. I'm old. I'm going to get injured. <laughs> Keith Mitchell is kind of like the the top, right? Yeah, he looks... I think what he's doing looks good. It's crazy that he's younger than me because I swear he's older than me. Like, How visually. I, yeah. I think he's like 34 okay. or 37. But he's older than you still. His pants look great. He's sponsored by Sid Mashburn. So it's a little bit more traditional. I just think that there's a lot... Like, I used to wear really slim pants golfing. And I would put my golf ball in my pocket, and I'm like, I look stupid yeah. every time you take a photo. And I feel like like Rory's a very muscular dude. You don't have to like show off your muscle with this tight clothing all the time, you know? 
It's, I think it's probably a good thing that Nike's getting out of the golf space. <laughs> if we're honest yeah. about what their shit is, it's, it's not been, good right now. It's not been good. It's I, not like the the one sweat. I do like the sweatshirt that Scotty wore when he opened up the shoes. Even though you're like, it was like had a nice like feathering and um, texture to it. But overall, Nike's like dropped the ball when it comes to yeah. fashion right now. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think I think there's some. Uh, it's just a shame that like sponsoring a tour pro is just at this like so level expensive. that is just so untouchable. But I think LPGA, there's an opportunity where we can get really cool brands with women who wear clothing better than we do. Yeah, that um, we can see what a brand might look like. Yeah, and it would be cheaper for the brand. Yeah, cost wise, um, and I would love to see what that looks like because I think that there's like absolutely under armor looks awful not good adidas is not doing anything revolutionary at all so yeah. i th i think this is a huge opportunity for like new brands to step in with golf right now yeah and, um i mean we've seen it like malbon did a good job with they got a lot of coverage uh for sponsoring jason day yeah and and now he Lulu with minmu right? yeah you know that's cr that's a crazy. Lulu with Minmu, yeah, I like that. But can we talk about Jason Day's new sponsorship with his shoes? Have you seen those? Yeah. Okay. I didn't read. I didn't like read it. I just saw it. I so think what, he has an equity ownership, but I think they're as ugly as squares are. And squares, I'm for if you're like a a rounded out man. Like yeah. if you want some Nick Faldo. Yeah, you need, <laughs> yeah, you need some weight, some substance to your shoe. Get some squares. I have a buddy who plays squares. He's like his head is huge. He can't. He's he only wear visors. Boy. He's a big boy. I'm all for it for sure. But this brand is like Under Armour, but bad. Okay. I just like don't get it. And then like the rope hat with the Dewall, and I feel like Malbon with Jason Day must. They just must be maybe not so happy because their stuff is decent. But when you're partnering it with what he just did with shoes and his hat and DeWalt, Jason Day's not like drilling shit in with DeWalt tools right now. I think it reminds you, regardless of what you have as a company, like a product, these guys are still golfers. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to take the bag fucking, whenever they can. They'll take the bag yeah. and they're dorks. Yeah. And there's no Riz. There's right. <laughs> right. There's nothing there. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. Sure. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well. Something to, look, something to look forward to. We're going to keep our yeah. eye on it. We'll keep our eye on it. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Not everybody has do. the statuesque body of Max Masters here. I don't know if it's the body. More <laughs> of a face guy. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk about your guy that you called. You were the first person to say it. You said Anthony Kim. Yeah. Was going to shoot did. four to five under. I did. Hong Kong tournament just happened. Yeah. He shot 65. He did. Yeah. I was, 500. Yeah. Like your girlfriend, I was a week late. I got nervous. And then everything was all right afterwards. So <laughs> my girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was tough. I s made those statements um, on the excitement of just him coming back. Yeah. And I'm I'm still an Anthony Kim fan. I'm certainly concerned for him. He, he looked like he been through some stuff yeah like, i didn't know how much we want to talk about that i feel like he's been through some stuff we'll yeah. finally find out at some point sure what actually happened There's netflix is probably gonna make a documentary about it yeah i'd watch it i would too i would oh, watch the shit absolutely out of it. yeah he probably didn't have a camera on for a lot of it but yeah i'm still a huge anthony kim fan he like watching him play when i was 18 was so exciting so i was really devastated that he had a rough few rounds his first week out with Liv, um, I'm sure there was a lot of nerves and so much pressure that this was one of the biggest comebacks that we've probably ever seen. I mean, yeah. the guy was gone for 10 or 11 years. Yeah. Right? It's, so, it's like the biggest question mark ever. And the guy was like, you can't fuck this up. And there's probably some Saudi machetes sticking yeah. around like, don't fuck this up. Dude, like, please play well. Please play well. We Without need the this. Please. Yeah. So he, yeah. So he didn't do that. But then he comes back and he fires like the guy has so much game. That, game that I will never see in my entire life. That's the fucking thing about golf. This guy has unlimited ta talent. He left for whatever reason outside of the injury. Um, he took that amount of time off. He shot 65. And now I'm sitting over here like, well, everything that we spoke about a couple weeks ago could become true. Yeah. Let's see what happens when they come back to Miami. Right. Does the guy light it up on U.S. soil? He Who could. knows? Because I'm sure 65 for him like that is like, 
hell yeah, I'm back. Right. I think once you free yourself up one as a time. golfer at that level, yep. you feel so much better. You just need it one time. Yeah. I don't know. Let's go. Let's go. Let's see what happens. Also, man. I don't know what the cars look like, but still 65 is 65. So it doesn't matter. I, I lived in Hong Kong for three months mm. and I, I, I bet you were really big there. Yeah. Yes, it was, <laughs> Hong Kong was an interesting experience. It's probably not that interesting for like a golf podcast, but that was know. a wild time. Like, so where I lived originally was, um, Causeway Bay, which is like their Times Square essentially. Okay. And it's all built cause like the main area of Hong Kong, there's like a, it's kind of like the L train in New York where it just cuts across. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess this for the Hong Kong, it's more of like the six train. It takes you all the way around the, the East like river. Cool. Um, so, that I, first, I lived in Causeway Bay, and then I lived in HKU, which is like Hong Kong University. It's kind of near the top of the areas that people go. Sure. Um, so when I would go through Causeway Bay to like get to different castings or whatever, I would drive by um, Hong Kong Country Club or whatever it's called, like every day. And I wanted to get in there. I kept looking at like Did how you have to your make clubs? it happen. No, I didn't have my no. clubs, but I would have gone and used rental, like just to be able to say that you play golf in Hong Kong. Sure. So it was cool to actually finally see inside the doors, um, watching some of the live highlights. It's kind of cool. Yeah, it's a cool track. So do you know what they played at? Yardage wise? No, I no. don't. If they're playing at seventy, uh, par seventy. I like imagine 70, 200, 70 yeah, yeah. yeah, they probably they tried to stretch as much as they could out of that place. Yeah. So uh, my, my when I lived in Brooklyn, my home website, I Lisa can probably attest to this. Instead of like Google or Yahoo, I'd pull up um, Firefox, and it was just it was the L train and it would just say like yes or no, like whether yeah. I could even get on the train yeah. that I need to to get to Manhattan. Dude, so. when I <laughs> lived in New York, I first was in. Um, which did you play any golf when you lived in New York? Uh, Beth Page and then Decker Beach, which is a Muni course. That I took the subway to like three or four times. Tight. Carried my bag, walked a mile. It was the most daunting day, but it was a ton of fun. And then Beth Page, and that was it. Like no Jersey courses, which I would have tried. I know when harder. I lived there, I I didn't even bring my clubs, and I was out there. I popped back home quite a bit and like played from time to time when I came mm-hmm. home. But I was more of a get me to the beach. Yeah. So like went and surfed in New Jersey a couple of times That's and cool. went out to, um, I almost said Causeway Bay, but the, uh, oh my God, what the hell is the beach that's like attached to Brooklyn? Uh, whatever. doesn't matter. I would go out there and we'd surf. It yeah. was really fun. But um, there's a, yeah, there's a big like Brook, weird Brooklyn surfing community yeah. out there. Yeah. I just watched a documentary on like Lido and like the resurgence of Lido before it was the Hamptons and all okay. that like it just with Tom Doak it seems so cool I think golf in New York and New Jersey is probably some of the greatest golf we have in the country and I'm a little bummed I didn't do it when I was there I was just like really young but yeah I wasn't really spending my extra money on uh no on going to play golf what was extra money when you right lived in New York? right yeah exactly yeah. I was spending on rent yeah but yeah that would I would love to go do an east coast trip oh my gosh they're phenomenal i think being in phoenix we have like a, a the smallest amount of history when it comes to golf courses there's just tradition like i love an old locker room i love an old clubhouse i just love like the walkways between holes that are just so ingrained that like they're like two or three feet down because people have been walking on them for 50 or 60 years i just think that's so cool we uh my dad and i played sfgc so San Francisco yeah. Golf Club and like the oldest locker room. I'll like put it in this video for everybody to see. So traditional, like so classic, exactly what you're describing. Yeah. You walk in and it's like wire for the lockers. Yeah. And this place is exclusive. Like, yeah. Really, really sick. And I love that That's stuff. what East Coast captures. Even when I went and played, um, having some family in Michigan, like playing in Michigan, those country clubs, they're like country clubs. Yeah. Like it's these like – incredible rolling hills it's just the stuff that we don't see yeah. out here yeah my i played uh, town and country in minnesota and i think it's the second or third oldest country club on its own land um and it's right in the heart of like saint paul and the views are incredible it's really short i mean it's on like city blocks but you go down the basement there's like still someone who's like properly like shining shoes and you just like know that those lockers have been there since the first people signed up for it um not a long course but just the history of it people have tried to buy it developers 
uh, colleges and they just refuse because they know how important it is, which yeah. I think is so great about golf. Yeah, it's really because we can appreciate like the Encanto public, you know, yeah. Muni course here, All but day. then you see those sort of places and you're like, this is really sick. And don't get me wrong, like Silverleaf, really, really fucking cool. Yeah, like all those different public, private, like that differential it's still you can appreciate so much about both yeah and like the clubs that these guys were using to play on courses like that is insanity to me i, I mean, want to get a i want to get we like should do like an old persimmon yeah hickory. persimmon yeah that would be fun should challenge each other let's see what it. happens and we can we only have holes? to get one set yeah it's <laughs> beautiful that never happens You're right yeah yeah we should do that um okay so i have a question that'll lead into a question okay if you could play Augusta National, what three people would you bring to fill out your foursome? Okay. Augusta National, one time. Yep. I would take my dad. No question. He got me into this game. I would take my grandpa. He helped um, like purchase land for this course in Wisconsin and was a big part of New Richmond Golf Club. So my dad, my grandpa, and then... Um, I would say, oh my gosh, Augusta. That, that one's so hard. It is just so tough. I, like, I feel like my grandpa would absolutely lose it to see Tiger Woods. Like, we have yeah. to see Tiger Woods play because there are so many incredible shots. And he was the first person to be like, oh, Augusta, like, I can destroy this course. You what know? era of Tiger would you oh, pick? I think late, like 97, yeah. of course. Yeah. 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 What What are you taking? Who be? Who, who's your? <laughs> it's so so. Dad, number one, got me into the game of golf, like yourself, and uh, it'd be yeah. My dad's hard one one. You know, he'd be the right. one. Um, then I'm gonna have to also go Tiger because he's also a reason why I'm so in love with this game. Sure. Just the era that we grew up in. You know, the he's the guy, um, and a lot of people always comment on, you know. You're not even going to be able to hit a shot. But I think if I stepped up on the tee, first tee at Augusta National, I'm not hitting a shot anyways. It doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter at all. The third one, I like, it's weird that those, like my dad and Tiger, those are automatic. It's yeah. Like, okay, automatic. Then I feel like you mentioned it earlier. You, maybe you bring a vibes guy, someone sure. who's like a good time. I would honestly love to see, say I don't bring Tiger. This would just be entertaining at this point. You don't bring Tiger. You bring like, uh, you bring Phil and Michael Jordan, and just Ooh. watch each other, like watch them gamble. The gamble, away yeah. The entire deal, yeah. That would be pretty interesting. With a couple of briefcases. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah. So that'd I, be fun. Right. So you're you're gonna play Augusta. Yeah. You can't invite your dad. Okay. And you can't invite Tiger. Okay. Because yeah. I feel like that's probably yeah, something that that's, like that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Um. Can't invite my dad. Can't invite Tiger. Yeah, uh, Phil. I mean, I'd probably invite Phil. We're lefties. Yeah, we're lefties. That's a really cool moment. I love Charles Barkley. Give me Charles Barkley. Oh, my gosh. The commentary alone. Blast. That'd yeah. be such a good time. And then... Uh, and makes you feel better a little bit, probably. Yeah. Sorry, Charles, but... Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> and then give me another guy that just kind of like seals the deal we were talking about before. My buddy is friends with... Um, He's Jason Bateman's a buddy of his. Yeah, that would be, that would be so that'd fun. be a great foursome. Yeah, sign me up. A little like comedic roasting. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Give me somebody that's like you're gonna have a good match with them. Yeah, but also they're gonna they're gonna bring that extra little level. I mean, I I want someone to like make Augusta more comfortable because there's no way that when you walk on the first tee you're gonna feel comfortable. So I need someone who's just gonna like, yeah, throw some jokes. A little roast, just bring down the level of like stress and anxiety, intensity yeah. of what the day could be. Yeah, I wonder if Larry David would do that, or he would make it worse. Like, is he is he going to oh, be I funny? Had to fly or... all the way out here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if pimento and cheese. Yeah, he fucking hates it. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, that would be so tough. I feel like uh, Steph Curry is a great golfer. Like yeah. that would be fun to yeah, see cool. how he would do it. I don't know. I'm such a like a. Um, Suns fan that I like don't even care about. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's yeah, it is what it is. I have a couple cousins who live in San Francisco and they just like are do you see what Seth did? I was like, no, I don't pay attention. Suns are on right now. <laughs> yeah. I mean I'm with you for sure. But I do appreciate the little golf swing that he did. 
after yeah, he drained yeah. like the longest three. I love those memes were hilarious. Hilarious. They're really with the good. Chicken back. Yeah. What's that about? And they cut her out of like the <laughs> the actual NBA post or TNT or whatever it was. Oh, did they? Yeah. yeah. They cut her out and like just merged the rest of the uh, yeah. crowd. It's right. Funny. So. Yeah. Right As a social media guy, you probably are like I, I get pinpoint that. all that <laughs> shit. It's so funny. I'm such a dork. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. A, um. Okay, let's do it. We'll do it quickly. There's a potential that we're both going to the Masters. Could so, real, it's we'll we'll definitely be recording from there mm-hmm. if that's the case. It might be in a Super Eight hotel. Yeah. Um, but there's a there's a high likelihood that we're both headed that way. So I'm so excited, man. Let's do it. It'll be sweet. It'll be sweet. Um, all right. Before we sign off, who is your Players Champion? Oh man, I don't even. I know it's Thursday. I haven't watched anything today. I know. I mean, I know who's leading. I only saw. Oh, this is gonna be bad. I only saw like three holes of Jake Knapp, but the guy is playing so well, and yeah. the pressure is not getting to him. Yeah, I like that. I like a little under uh, yeah. underdog, like a dark horse. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna stick to what I said a couple weeks ago. Rory's gonna He's win. He's due. Yep. He, and it would make me so happy. The guy's been under so much stress and yeah. so much pressure. Rory over Scotty any day of the week. I love Scotty. You guys, I would, the guy's uh, going to win forever. I would I would probably – I'd fight that for a long time. I would agree 100%. <laughs> yeah. like if anybody was like, oh, I'd rather watch Scotty Shuffler play versus Rory, I'd definitely pick Rory. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. For sure. I mean, yeah, Scotty's doing such great things. He is so talented. We just know he's so talented that I think all of us as normal humans who suck at golf want someone who's not like perfect. Also, Scott, it, Scotty's swing is not perfect, but it shouldn't be that easy. Yeah, it should not be that you easy. You shouldn't get yeah. on tour and yeah. just be the guy. Yeah. Like at least Rory <laughs> Rory came on tour and was the guy and then it kind of dipped. And yeah. Now we're going to see what happens. Totally. I still also think he's going to like maybe miss the cut at the Masters. But he's going to win this week. The players. We'll Rory? Yeah, yeah, dude. It's just too much for him. It is a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Ayahuasca trip maybe for Rory. Yeah, that's probably it. That's yeah. probably it. You'll, like, have some, some uh, like, crazy, crazy moments. fucking moments. Yeah. All right, brother. Cool, bud. See you at the Masters. Yeah. Fuck yeah.